Well, hello everyone. I wanted to work a problem from the Chapter 4 homework assignment. It was one of the most missed of my 10 graders. It was problem 66 from 4.3, and it asked us to solve and graph this thing. And, well, what is this thing? Well, this thing is an inequality, and it has absolute value. Therefore, it's what we call an absolute value inequality. Now, I've written the V here slightly funky because uh, this is a mnemonic device and it really should be the starting point for our thinking about these kinds of problems. Absolute value graphs as a V and as far as I know it's the only function that essentially names its graph. So it's a nice mnemonic but even deeper than that the V here splits and it tells us that essentially absolute value has this split personalities and that there's two paths to a solution and so that's something we're going to have to deal with as we work our way through this problem. It's our starting point, the understanding that this is different than a normal situation where we have an equation. Absolute value means two paths to the solution almost always. Now I'm going to use to solve this my cover-up method, which I've introduced in a preceding video whose link you see coming into the scene right now. If you haven't watched that, you certainly want to watch that because I'm not going to introduce my cover-up method here. I'm going to simply use it to solve this. I think it's a nice hack. I think it, it builds on what you already know about absolute value and you'll see that as I step my way through it here without any introduction. The first move though is always the same no matter what technique you use to solve these absolute value inequalities. You need to isolate the absolute value. Just like as in equations you isolate the unknown, here we're going to isolate the absolute value. And so my first move is to subtract 5 from both sides. And when I do that I get the absolute value of x minus 4 is greater than 5. So I've isolated this thing and now we're ready to move on to the second move, which is basically the cover up move method. Essentially what I do is I cover up this part right here and then I do some thinking about what I'm looking at. I ask myself, what values under my finger will make this statement true? And I think you see that any number greater than 5 will make this statement true. And so I simply jot that down. What's ever under my finger has to be greater than 5. If that happens, then the inequality is true. But again, since we're dealing with absolute value, we have a dual situation, a split personality we have to deal with. And that's where the next thinking comes in. If what is under my finger is negative 5 or less, slightly less than negative 5, like negative 5.1, then it will also be true. Because negative 5.1 will be made positive by the absolute value and I'll have a positive 5.1 greater than 5. One more example. How about we do something more dramatic like negative 100. If what's under my finger is a negative 100, then the negative 100 will be made, made, made positive by the absolute value and we'll have 100 greater than 5. So that's certainly true. So whatever is under my finger can, can also be true, will also prove true if it's less than negative 5. If what's under, under my finger is less than negative 5, then the original problem will also be true. And so there you see the sp split personality that I had to deal with. And all that's left to do is to ferret out the or or and possibilities here. And I'm going to assert that it's or. If what's other under my finger is greater than 5, or if what's other under my finger is less than negative 5, I will have a, a true situation. This is the less restrictive. Or means it can be this one or it can be that one. And would have meant that both conditions have to be met. And I think you can see or at least feel as we work our way through this that or really is the right word to use here, which of course translates into union. At any rate, we move on to the final part of our problem. We replace our finger with what was underneath our finger. And so I'm going to get rid of that and what was under my finger was x minus 4 and of course it was also what was under my finger over here and so we bring that in and up 
And now we have two little sub-problems to work, and the move is rather simple. We, we add four to both sides in both of these situations. And when we do that, we end up with our solution right here. And so we have actually done the solving part, and we now need to do the graphing part. Either x is greater than 9, or x can be less than negative 1. Let me graph this first part here, and I wanted to show you something I think is sort of interesting. Namely, um, one of the mistakes I saw a lot is just sort of getting spun on these. This can be thought of as an arrowhead, and so when I graph this, my arrow is going to be going to be pointing like this. And this is a way of just checking to make sure that I don't uh, spin out on, at the very end of this. Similarly, when I graph this little aspect of the problem, the arrowhead is pointing to the left, and so this one is going to graph that way. Okay, that being said, let's go ahead and bring in a uh, value of 9. Now, you decide where to put this. I'm going to put it right there. We're not worried about drawing this thing to scale. And so, I'll call that point 9. And then what I'm going to do is use the left parentheses. And I prefer that instead of the open circle because when we get into interval notation, I can simply read it right off the graph. Of course, this problem didn't ask for interval notation, but it's a nice head start in that direction. And now we remember our L is pointing this way, and so we will complete that part of the solution like that. And now we go ahead and fetch our other part of the split personality of absolute value inequalities, which was negative 1. x can be less than negative 1. And since it's uh, less, I will again use the open parentheses like that. And my arrow is pointing to the left like so. And so there you go. These are the two solutions graphed together forming uh, one solution. And so that is our answer. And uh, I used the cover up method. I did not memorize any rules. Here are our two answers. I um, hope that helps. I'll be talking to you soon.